Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie. In this video, I'm going to be looking at the weekend of March the 2nd and March the 3rd, 2024. We've had some news out of the UK, which I have found quite surprising. There has been a by-election result. So a by-election is something that happens when a member of parliament uh, dies or resigns or has to leave his, his or her post for whatever reason. And the usual parties put forward candidates um, for the by-election. And there was an additional candidate from the Workers' Park Party of Britain by the name of George Galloway. Maybe you've heard of George Galloway. Um, he really made a name for himself uh, during the sort of Gulf War in um, in, in two, the last Gulf War in 2003, where he was uh, sort of eloquently attacking the basis uh, for uh, the United States' intervention. And I think he was involved with Stop the War. Um, he has a big presence on YouTube. He has um, this YouTube channel, M-O-A-T, Mother of All Talk Shows. And, and uh, yeah, he is, uh, he's got away with words. And he is, yeah, he is, a, um, he's a, a real personality. He's also a passionate supporter of the Palestinians. And obviously he is um, incensed by what is happening in, in Gaza. So there was this by-election and the candidate for the Labour Party was expected to win. But then this candidate for the Labour Party, um, I think, made some remarks about Israel, which um, were considered to be um, unfortunate, to say the least. And so the Labour Party withdrew its support from him. And so we got the by-election result, and um, George Galloway won. And so George George Galloway is going to be back in Parliament. He's been a part member of Parliament before several times. He was originally a member of Parliament for the Labour Party, and he um, he, he had a party called Respect. He he draws a lot of support um, from Muslim voters um, in Rochdale, as I. Think believe something like 30% of voters are um, are Muslim. And he, you know, he said after his victory, uh, you know, he was re addressing um, Keir Starmer, the leader of the Labour Party. He said, this is for Gaza. Uh, I think that this by-election victory is, could be quite major uh, in terms of its impact on British politics. Um, not just because of Gaza. Uh, George Galloway is an independent voice. Uh, on, his, um, on his YouTube channel, he has had guests who were very critical of, for example, uh, the, the war in Ukraine and um, the West's support for the, the war in Ukraine. And, you know, so far in terms of mainstream British politics, um, no one has questioned the, uh, the, the validity of Britain's active support for Ukraine, uh, or sh should we call it uh, NATO's proxy war, however you want to see it, uh, with Russia. And so we now have this independent voice who has questions about it, and he's going to be a mem member of Parliament. As a member of Parliament, uh, he's going to make speeches. He's going to ask questions. And I would not be surprised if um, the election of George Galloway in some way shifts things um, in the UK, because the UK has been very supportive um, of Ukraine and no questions about this this war almost. You know, certainly far more supportive than people people are in the in the US and uh it may just take one person to ask a few questions now I don't know what George Galloway how George Galloway is going to use his um position in parliament but he's beholden to no one he's beholden to no one um uh he's not a member of of 
any of the mainstream parties. He can say what he likes. And so that may be one impact um, of his election, which people haven't talked about, but uh, I think that is um, a possibility. Um, aside from George Galloway, uh, well, I do, of course, want to look at George Galloway's chart. I do have a time of birth. Great thing about George Ga Ga Galloway from an astrological point of view is he's born in Scotland, born, I think, in Dundee. So in Scotland, on Scottish birth, birth certificates, um, you have the time of birth. I also want to look at talk, talk about Gaza um, in particular. Um, well, there was an incident. Uh, let me just sh show you what I was talking about. Um, there was an incident uh, very recently where um, a lot of people were killed in an attack. Uh, I just wanted to look at the, the chart of this attack um, in Gaza. Uh, but I should make it absolutely clear I'm not taking sides. You know, I'm, I'm really wary of talking about Gaza and Palestine and Israel. Um, you know, I, I think I wrote something in October. I, I got I got criticised in the comments from both sides. You know, people who were thought I was too critical. Someone, someone thought I was being overly critical of Netanyahu. Uh, I don't think I said anything about Netanyahu. Um, other people thought I was just being too neutral, maybe, um, and I wasn't being sufficiently um supportive of the uh of the palestine cause I, I really don't want to express an opinion here i'm just i just want to i want to be as neutral as as i can uh, sure i have my own views but i don't want to i don't really want to express these views here so here was this article um in the bbc so this is you know, israeli gaza war more than a hundred reported killed in crowd near gaza aid convoy uh, so at least 112 Palestinian. This was this news story was when was it? Uh, I can't remember when it was. Um, this was up sometime. Anyway, I've got the date. So this was a, this was a couple of days ago. At least 112 Palestinians are said to have been killed and 760 injured trying to get desperately needed aid in Gaza. Crowds descended on convoy of lorries on the coastal roads southwest of Gaza City in the presence of Israeli tanks. Israel's military says tanks fired warning shots but did not strike the convoy. Some Palestinians say troops fired directly at them. Um, so there is um, uh, there are different views about what exactly happened. Um, uh, so you know, it's, it's a convoy of 30 lorries uh, carrying Egyptian aid was making its way north along what the Israeli Defense Force described as a humanitarian corridor when it sur was surrounded by civilians with people climbing onto the trucks. Uh, there's a sort of picture of it. Uh, um, so uh, you know, one view, the Israeli view, is some began violently pushing and even trampling other Gazans to death, looting the humanitarian supplies, said the IDF's chief spokesman, Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari. The unfortunate incident resulted in dozens of Gazans killed and injured. Israeli tanks, he said, cautiously tried to disperse a mob with a few warning shots, but pulled back when when the hundreds became thousands and things got out of hand. And he said no IDF strike was conducted towards the aid convoy, he said, insisting the Israeli military had been trying to help the aid convoy reach its destination. Um, um, so, you know, there is an alternative view. Hamas rejected the IDF's account, citing undeniable evidence of direct firing at citizens, including headshots aimed at immediate killing. Um, so, you know, there are different views. I don't know what happened. So I'm just um, citing this, you know, I'm using this um, BBC article to just show what that there are two views about what happened. But this article does have a time in it. Um, so it, it says here, to, Thursday's incident took place shortly after 4.45 at the Nabulsi roundabout on the southwest edge southwestern edge of Gaza City. So that does give me something something to go on. I can set up a chart for 445 in Gaza um, to see you know, what was going on. I'm not going to be able to tell you what was going on, whether the Israeli account or the Palestinian uh, Hamas account was, was correct. Um, uh, so that's, that's what I want to um, look at. So I want to look at... Um, I want to look at George, George Galloway's by-election victory. I want to look at Gaza. I want to look, briefly look at the charts of Israel and Palestine. 
Um, clearly things are hotting up. Uranus is is starting to make its presence felt, I think, and I think its presence will become increasingly felt um, over the next few months as we move into the summer. Um, but before I look at um, Palestine and Gaza and George Galloway, I want to look at the astrology and the I Ching for this weekend, the weekend of March the 2nd and March the 3rd, 2024. So top right, that's uh, that's George Galloway. Uh, he often he often wears wears a hat. Uh, is it a trilby? Uh, is it a trilby? I don't know. I'm not very I'm not good. I'm not very good at uh, names of types of hats. But he has his trademark hat, uh, which he often wears, uh, but no hat there in that picture. Um, so what's going on this weekend? Um, the moon moves into Sagittarius. Uh, it moves into Sagittarius at one fifty-six p.m. in um, in London uh, on Saturday. Um, so you know that means that Saturday is a, is a changeover day. There will be a, will be times from. from when when the moon is in Scorpio, there will be times when the moon is in Sagittarius. Uh, if you are in, say, New York, uh, the moon will move into Sagittarius at um, eight fifty six in the morning. If you are in um, Los Angeles, uh, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington. Um, then uh, the moon will move into. Uh, let's get this right. Then the moon will move into Sagittarius at uh, five um, fifty-six um, a.m. in the morning. So, from an American perspective, the moon is in Sagittarius pretty much the whole weekend. Um, if you're in Western Europe. Uh, then uh, the moon will move into Sagittarius, um, sort of afternoon, the afternoon, early afternoon on um, on Saturday. If you are in Australia, New Zealand, then really the moon is in the moon is in Scorpio through Saturday, and it's only in on Sunday um, that uh, that you get the moon moving into Sagittarius. Now, this sign change from the moon in Scorpio to the moon in Sagittarius uh, is, uh, you know, is quite, is quite dramatic. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's, um, you know, we have, we have the moon in, in one sign, Scorpio, which is, um, it's a water sign. It's quite an emotional sign. Uh, it's a sign that can be quite brooding. Uh, you know, we don't really want to reveal our feelings. Uh, we uh, we perhaps want to keep ourselves to ourselves, and we're careful what we say. And then we move into Sagittarius. It's a fire sign, um, and for, you know, for many of us, that's going to be a big relief uh, because you know there hasn't been much fire around. You you look at you look at the the chart here this is a chart set for by the way this is a chart set for um you know the middle of the weekend um noon sorry midnight on sunday uh on sunday march the 3rd you can see that the moon is the only planet in in a in a far sign yes i know the moon is a satellite it's not a planet but from an astrological point of view uh um uh it's it's easiest to regard it as a planet uh same way, but the sun is a star, not a planet, but still, I call it a planet. Um, uh, so, you know, you, okay, you've got the North Node and Charon in Aries, but that doesn't really count. I mean, these are these are slow moving points. That it's it's not there, there really isn't any fire. And so at times it may feel that there's nothing going on. There's no spark. But then the moon moves into Sagittarius. So suddenly there is some action. There is some excitement, things going on. Uh, there's a bit of fire, so that's the change when the moon goes into Sagittarius. People uh, can be more 
you know, more enthusiastic about what's going on in the world. Um, they, there can be a, a greater sense of excitement. Uh, Moon in Sagittarius uh, is often uh, quite tactless. You know, Moon in Sagittarius likes to say what's on its mind. Um, it doesn't like to filter it. Uh, so that means, that, you know, that, yeah, it's, it uh, can be quite hurtful on the surface. I mean, Moon in Sagittarius does not mean to be hurtful, never means to be hurtful. But sometimes people can uh, react badly to what Moon in Sagittarius um, says. But just remember, Moon in Sagittarius doesn't mean any harm. This, this means that... Uh, you know, if you hear someone being brutally honest over the weekend, uh, don't be offended. That's just Moon in Sagittarius. Uh, no, that doesn't mean that you have to be brutally honest. Be a bit careful what you say. Uh, you know, you don't want to hurt people's feelings um, just for the sake of it. Now, this uh, this Moon in Sagittarius on Sunday, it does make a square with Saturn. Um, so there you see there's Moon in Sagittarius starting to make a square with Saturn. You can see that. Um, that does uh, put a bit, of, a bit of a damper on things. Uh, you know, there will be on Sunday, you know, a sense of enthusiasm. We, we want to say what we want. Uh, we're enjoying our freedom. And then all of a sudden we hit a bit of a block. Uh, we get we get some pushback on what we're trying to achieve. Um, I don't think it's very serious pushback, um, but uh, we can't expect complete freedom. So on Sunday, you know, we're enjoying our freedom, then suddenly something happens, and we have to accept a bit of limitation. And perhaps it's a good thing. Perhaps it's about restraint. Uh, perhaps it's about uh, reorganizing ourselves. Um, having to reconsider what we're saying and why we're saying. So a bit of structure there could be very useful. Another aspect going on over the weekend is a square aspect between um, Venus and Uranus. There's Venus, around 19 Aquarius, uh, moving to a square of, um, 19, uh, of Uranus at 19 Taurus. Um, so really this dominates uh, the whole weekend. I mean, theoretically, this aspect is on Sunday, but really Saturday, Sunday, Venus square Uranus marks the, the experience of the weekend. And this aspect uh, may be about relationships um, because, you know, Venus is natural ruler of, of relating. And when it's square Uranus, Uranus is a planet of unexpected events, uh, of revolutions perhaps. So we could see a relationship undergoing an unexpected change or perhaps one party in a relationship is going to behave in a way that just simply wasn't planned for. And it's therefore going to be important that the other party uh, responds in the right way. And that means not overreacting to the situation and it sort of feeds into the fact that the moon is in Sagittarius at least on Sunday uh, so with Venus square Uranus moon and moon in Sagittarius there may be uh, um, unexpected interpersonal events perhaps perhaps which are triggered by something that someone says or does on, I suppose, the most sort of positive note, Venus square Uranus may be a sudden, um, a sudden and fortunate change in a relationship. Suddenly the pace um, gets stronger and more satisfying and more meaningful. Um, that's, that is um, a positive way of looking at Venus square Uranus. You, saw, you could also say um, that relationships could just break up very quickly. I mean, this is more sort of new relationship, someone you, you hardly know, perhaps you're getting closer to them and suddenly uh, the whole thing falls apart, uh, just like that. Um, and so, so do, do consider that, that possibility. Or a sudden meeting, Venus square Uranus, that's what Venus, you know, Venus square Uranus can be about. Um, perhaps going to a party or some other, or just meeting someone in the street. Suddenly you meet someone out of the blue, maybe you know them, maybe you don't, and... Uh, suddenly something is happening. 
Um, so it's it is exciting uh, that Venus square Uranus, uh, but um, it can be uh, a little bit uh, destabilizing. And really, that is it. I mean, that is what's going on over the weekend. I would have said that this weekend is not particularly busy uh, in an astrological sense. Does it mean it's going to be a quiet weekend? I'm not saying it's going to be a quiet weekend. Um, but, uh, you know, that that Venus square Uranus is likely to have an impact, um, helped by the fact that the moon is going, in Sag going into Sagittarius. But uh, there isn't much to report. Which uh, brings me on to my forecasts for the 12 signs. Uh, these are my forecasts for the weekend of March the, March the 2nd and March the 3rd, 2024. Aries, you're starting to feel a bit of a change. Over the last few days, you have been uh, perhaps a little bit introspective. Um, your um, emotions may have been uh, sort of stronger and more powerful than usual. And as you move into the weekend, uh, there is a change of direction um, because the moon is moving into Sagittarius. Um, suddenly you feel that uh, things are going on. Uh, there's more excitement and uh, it may, f may also feel that the spark has come back because, you know, as an Aries, uh, you know, you are a far sign. Um, you know, you like that energy, um, that spark. It's very important to you. And there haven't been any, there's been nothing in, there's been nothing uh, in a far sign uh, for a bit of time. And suddenly you've got moon in a far, moon in a far sign, moon in Sagittarius. Um, and that allows you to be more positive and it allows you to think in terms of possibilities. And these possibilities um, could be about perhaps horizons, your, your horizons. Uh, you might have been just had a focus which has just been a little too narrow. And now you can start to broaden that focus. Um, start considering um, experiences which are new um, and exciting. And you know, perhaps there's a project that you have um, put on hold, but you can now... You can now put it back on the agenda, and you, in general, you can, you can be um, a lot more spontaneous, and at the same time, it's going to be easier for you to you know reach out to other people. I'm not just talking about one-to-one -one relationship relationships, but just all the people you know. Um, it's just going to be much easier for you to sort of be in contact with them, uh, to get feedback. You know, people who might have been ignoring you in the past, in the recent past, may be back in touch. And your simple actions um, are going to motivate um, everyone to um, uh, make their presence felt. And really, uh, you know, that is about it. It's actually quite a, quite a straightforward um, weekend. Um, it's true uh, that there may be a there may be a moment on Sunday where you have your reservations, um, where you're wondering whether or not you're doing the right thing. Um, but uh, it's just a passing reservation. It's a passing reservation, just a sort of. Uh, a little bit of something emotional that you're thinking, you're feeling, oh, you're not entirely comfortable. Is this the right thing? Should I be doing this? But then you'll move it, you'll get over it. And uh, I think uh, you'll have um, a quite a constructive weekend and a weekend where, where I think you're just going to feel that things overall are starting to um, improve. Taurus. Relationships are perhaps um, 
not quite as important uh, as they used to be. Um, you know, this is because the moon is changing sign. You know, the moon has been in had been in Scorpio uh, for quite a long period, a uh, few days. So it's not really a long period. Um, and now it's moving into Sagittarius, and Sagittarius um, is a sign which you know. Which, from a Torean perspective, um, is quite inward-looking, and you're not going to want to spend a lot of time with um, with other people, or at least with one other person. Spending time with one other person could just be exhausting. Uh, it may not be. Uh, it may not be what you want. Um, if you want relationships to work, if you if relationships are important to you, um, then you perhaps need to need to have a sort of a broader, more more community a, a pr community based approach. You know, perhaps concentrate focusing on lots of different people, uh, not just one person. If you spend time with one person, uh, it could just become um, a bit difficult and. You just might have to deal with things that you you're not really interested in. You you're not concerned about. And yes, your emotions are strong. Uh, there are a lot of things that that you are you are feeling, and uh, and having having someone else around is just, just not really not really going to be what you want. Um, at the same time. You are going to be quite good, though, at dealing with things which are complicated. Uh, maybe emotionally complicated, maybe financially compl complicated. Um, things that other people just don't want to deal with. But you are able to deal with it. Uh, you can sort of go, go into places that no one else is prepared to touch with a barge pole. And um, your insistence... And, on getting to the bottom of things, um, even if it hurts, um, is is you know is going to be very useful. Uh, you know, that could be about that could well be financial. Um, you're told something. Uh, you want to know whether it's true, and you want to know if it's really true, and so you really are prepared to really understand um, what is um, what is going on. Um, now, there is still a question about how much you can um, withdraw from society. Um, I say this because you know Venus is your Venus is your um, ruling planet. Venus rules Taurus, and Venus is square Uranus. Uh, so even if you are trying to withdraw from society, things might happen. Uh, people may make their presence felt when you don't, ex when you least expect it, and you know your first impulse might be quite negative because you had an idea about the way you wanted to organise your weekend, and then someone comes along and just changes everything or tries to change everything. I would suggest that you are open-minded, um, consider the possibility that someone new coming into your life uh, is a bonus. Uh, you might not, you might really not want to deal with them, at least on an emotional level. Um, but you may be, it may be that you're being presented uh, with, with an opportunity. And, you know, this opportunity could be, could be financial, it could relate to, to, to the to business it could relate to career it could be could relate to just the whole way in which you present yourself to society i mean this is because you know venus is you know venus is ruling is in a, is moving through aquarius uh which is a high profile sign from a torian perspective and uranus is moving through your star sign you might think or your ascendant sign or your moon sign Depending on how you you are looking at these um, readings for the twelve signs, um, you know you might think 
that change comes from outside. But with Uranus moving through Taurus, your sign, uh, change is maybe coming from within. Uh, maybe you are the one who is creating change. And with Venus square, uh, making a square to Uranus, this may be your chance. You unexpectedly uh, have an opportunity uh, to cause real change. And you shouldn't blame it on other people. Blame it on the outside. It's outs you know, the outsiders causing, causing a revolution, uh, causing you to have to change your plans. To change your plans. You know, deep down, I think you want change. And maybe... Uh, a sudden encounter with another person may give you an opportunity to um, bring about real and beneficial change over the weekend. Gemini. The moon is a uh, changing sign uh, from Scorpio to Sagittarius. Sagittarius is your opposite sign. Uh, and um, from a Gemini perspective, um, Sagittarius can be associated with uh, relationships. So you uh, you do have to uh, deal with certain people. You may not want to deal with them, but I think you do have to deal with them. And uh, I think it's the right thing to do, making you know, making space for. Um, another person seeing what they have to say but within limits i say this because at the moment uh, there's something a little bit uh top heavy about the gemini existence um a lot of gemini's are putting too much focus into the the outside world um and you know, they're, they're perhaps forgetting who they are, why they're doing what they're doing, uh, what's important. Uh, you know, maybe you're just being overly influenced by pressures from outside. And, you know, this could be exhausting and it could be destabilizing. Uh, and this means that if you spend too much time focusing on another person's demands, then you're just going to be destabilizing your life and you're going to lose and you're going to lose touch uh with with who you are and what you are trying to achieve what not not what someone else um is trying to achieve and you know matters uh are made a bit more crazy by the fact that uh, venus is making um, a square aspect to uranus you know, it can be very exciting um venus may represent someone new uh, a new situation uh, and it's something you want to respond to uh, because it's exciting uh, because it brings brings variety um, but don't push it too far because I think there is yeah there is a danger that you do get um, destabilized and uh, so I th I'm thinking, Gemini, that this weekend it's very important that you don't uh, spread your resources um, too, too, too thinly. And when dealing with other people, you make absolutely sure uh, that you are the one in control. Now... I understand that moon is in your the moon is in your opposite is your, in your opposite sign of Sagittarius. That can indicate you know someone else taking the initiative, uh, but I do think that this weekend you can be in control. Even if you're you know with other people, you're going to be very good at establishing limits and boundaries. Um, you know, especially on Sunday, uh, when the moon makes a, a square aspect to Saturn, uh, you you know you know your limits, you know other people's limits, and if you want to sort of change scene or do something to um, put someone in their place, then you're going to be able to do it. It it will be easy, much easier than you think. You know, you might be afraid 
that uh, if you tell someone that enough is enough, that you need to go somewhere else, that you might get a negative response. I don't think you will. I think you'll be able to express yourself in a very clear and powerful and authoritative way. Cancer. You're now feeling uh, a certain sense of responsibility. Uh, You know that... uh, you know that there are things that need to be done. You know that uh, uh, in the past things have got a bit out of hand. Uh, we've had uh, a little bit of um, disruption and chaos creeping in. And as far as you're concerned, um, now this week, this weekend is you know it's the time to take back control. And uh, I think. Uh, that cancer is uh, something you will be able to do, especially on Sunday. Um, Now, I don't think everyone is going to appreciate uh, what you're trying to do. Um, You might get some resistance. uh, But but I think that you, you know, you do have a sense about, uh, you have a sense about what needs to be done. And um, you will be able to express this sense of what needs to be done very well. Um, You won't mince your words. And uh, so you'll be honest, uh, you'll be clear, um, and I think that people will will listen. um, And in the end, um, in the end, you're going to get... um, I think, um, good results. Um, now, as far as relationships are concerned, you know, I can't ignore the fact that uh, the moon on Sunday is making a square aspect to Saturn, or it's moving towards a square aspect to Saturn. It depends on your time zone. But uh, So the moon is uh, your ruler, um, Saturn is ruler of um, Capricorn, your opposite sign. So when Moon is square Saturn, there can be a moment where uh, you and someone else are not on the right wavelength. It's not to say that you're sort of arguing with each other necessarily, but you, you and someone else are just not on the right wavelength. You'll just feel it. Uh, so there's a question of how do you how do you deal with the situation? Um, I think it may be just it may be best to sort of just understand why you're on the right wavelength, um, and maybe one person has to compromise. Uh, is it going to be you? Is it going to be the other person? Uh, I su- I would su- suggest that you don't compromise. Um, Particularly if you feel yourself being pressured, um, you know, if you're being pressured to do work, uh, to do tedious things that other people, someone else doesn't want to do, if you feel that uh, excessive responsibility is being placed on your shoulders, uh, that you're being put into a slightly difficult position, then I would suggest that you don't uh, compromise, uh, but you also avoid uh, you avoid an actual conflict. You invo- avoid a showdown. I think that's important on Sunday, uh, to avoid a showdown. Um, so under those circumstances, it might be best if you keep a little bit of distance uh, from people, especially on um, a one-to-one level. Um, you can maybe do this by um, making a sudden decision. Uh, you know, telling someone, but you're going to do this uh, in in quite an unexpected way. Uh, uh, They're not going to be, uh, they're not going to be expecting you to say this. uh, So they won't really know how to respond. And then you'll just go and do it. And um, by the time they've thought about it and and, and decided they're going to complain about it, it's a fait accompli, you've already done it. Um, And in that way, you will be asserting your freedom and you won't be giving the other person a chance 
to complain. Leo. The moon is now moving uh, into Sagittarius. And so Leo is a fast sign. Um, the, moon has been in, has, the moon has been in Scorpio for a few days. And I think it's I think it's a bit of a relief uh, that uh, the moon is uh, moving out of uh, Scorpio. Uh, I think the the problem with the moon in Scorpio, at least from a Leo perspective, uh, was that to an extent it was trying to root you to the spot. You know, you were finding it uh, difficult to... Uh, do things, t difficult to be flexible, uh, difficult to relate uh, to the people around you, uh, difficult to make changes. And yeah, it, it was a bit inhibiting, uh, this uh, moon in Scorpio. But now the moon is in Sagittarius, uh, Leo. Uh, I think you're going to, you know, you're going to feel a lot more freedom. You, you're going to feel more that you're more yourself. Uh, now, it does to an extent depend on your time zone. When the moon moves into uh, moves into Sagittarius, okay. If you're in the Americas, it's going to be in the morning. It's going to be in, in Europe. It's going to be the evening. Uh, sorry, the afternoon. Uh, uh, if you're in Australia and New Zealand, it's going to be Sunday. Uh, but whenever the moon moves into Sagittarius, depending on your time zone, uh, you will feel that you're better able to express yourself. And, uh, you, you know, you you shouldn't feel guilty about it. I think in some ways you might feel guilty about it. Uh, you might f ask yourself, are you really doing the right thing? Uh, there may be moments of uh, sort of inhibition. Uh, I think coming largely from from um, an emotional source. Although I think it is possible that one particular person may be trying to restrict your freedom of action. Uh, but I don't think in a way that is serious. I mean, you could take it seriously. Uh, you could allow someone to get under your skin and prevent you doing from what you want to, to prevent you doing what you want to do but i i don't think so i think that in most cases you'll be able to sort of uh, uh ignore this and just and just do whatever you feel you want to do so is this something you've been wanting to do perhaps all week uh something that is you know a real sign of you know who you are uh, what your talents are, something you've really wanted to do, but for one reason or another, you just haven't got it together. Well, uh, yeah, in that case, uh, you know, over the weekend, you can really start to move things forward. Uh, and uh, it, it, it can be, uh, it can be very uh, exciting for you. Uh, so that's, that looks good. Um, and, at the same time, uh, choose your company carefully. Uh, some people are exciting, uh, life-affirming, uh, and uh, interesting. You know, other people will just could just hold you back. And this is especially on Sunday uh, when Venus, uh, which is moving through Aquarius, which is your opposite sign. Uh, when Venus is making a square aspect to Uranus. Um, uh, it, there are people who can really, really be, you know, be exciting. Uh, um, they can um, make your life more interesting. Uh, but there are other people who can just uh, cause you, know, they can uh, hold you back uh, just, and, uh, you know, prevent you from, from making the most of your potential and just causing needless confusion. So yes, so that is uh, that is going to be um, very important. Uh, and overall, Leo, I, I think the main thing this weekend is not to be self-conscious. Leo can be a self-conscious sign. Uh, Leo is is very much into itself and its image and 
how people perceive that image. But this weekend, just be yourself. Uh, don't worry about being accused of being childish or irresponsible. Uh, just, uh, yeah, just don't be self-conscious. Don't ask yourself um, too many questions because in all likelihood, whatever you're doing, if it comes from your heart, it will be the right thing to do. Virgo. Many Virgos might take the view that this weekend uh, they need to relax. Uh, you know, that, I suppose that's what weekends are for. Uh, you, you know, there's been a lot going on and you just want to just uh, enjoy your own space in your own way and you don't want too much pressure. And I think that that is absolutely fine. Uh, that is probably the right approach. Um, you, know, you know, there has been pressure. Uh, arguably, there is pressure, you know, for example, from other people. There are people have had demand. Uh, people, I think, have been placing demands on you, which uh, haven't always been welcome. Um, you know, these demands, you know, we're not just talking about something over the last few weeks, last few months. I mean, Saturn went into Pisces, your opposite sign, a year ago. Uh, it's still there. Um, and that can symbolize, you know, some of the demands that you've been having to deal with uh, over the last year. And yeah, and so now you you just want to want to relax. I mean, it's not that you want to do nothing but you just want to just uh, uh, build your own fire. Uh, I know Virgo isn't really associated with fire, but, you know, the fires, the, the hearth, you want, to, you want to build your own fire in your own way and get warm off your own fire and not have to worry about dealing with um, other people and their own concerns. Uh, now, you may have to be strong at times. Uh, on Sunday, uh, the moon uh, does make a square to Saturn. Uh, and because of that square to Saturn, uh, there may be pressure on you to do something someone else's way. Someone may demand your attention. Uh, and being a Virgo, uh, you may feel that you have to take account of this this demand you may have to uh, even give in to it but you don't have to uh i don't think you should do uh you know you're the person that matters i uh, you know your security your grounding is, is what matters so uh i would uh, i would suggest that you hold firm and that if you do interact um with other people however close they are to you uh that it basically happens on uh on your terms and uh you know while you're at it uh you know consider your own private space and it's probably possibly your own home uh consider how it's being how it's uh how it's configured look at the environment the domestic environment in which you live is it is it is it fine if it's not fine uh then you can make some big improvements and you know when dealing with your family uh don't be afraid of expressing your opinions uh, don't worry too much what you say uh you know, you might feel you're being sort of a bit rude and disruptive. Uh, but, you know, if something has to be said, it has to be said. And uh, you, you really shouldn't feel, shouldn't feel bad about it. Um, and, you know, in, in a general sense, when you're dealing with other people, uh, Virgo, um, I think that you will actually be very good at... Um, putting people in in their place you will you know the things you say uh will sound powerful and you will be able to give the impression uh 
that you know what you're talking about and you will be able to give the impression that there is acceptable behaviour and unacceptable behaviour and if someone is behaving in the wrong way I think you'll be able to be you'll be very good at at, at making them realise that what they're doing is unacceptable uh, almost in in a bit of an exaggerated way even if someone is not behaving in a particularly unacceptable way you can actually make them feel that it's unacceptable is that gaslighting are you actually going to be good at gaslighting people today i always get so confused about what the word gaslight means but uh, i think in a way perhaps if you really want to do some gentle constructive gaslighting today um i think maybe uh you can uh, pull it off libra the main aspect today, this weekend um, is a square aspect to, between um, Venus and Uranus. So Venus is obviously your, your, your ruling, ruling planet. Venus uh, rules Libra. And it is its square Uranus. Uh, this aspect could be quite exciting. Um, you know, Venus is in Aquarius, which is uh, in some ways quite an exciting sign for Venus to be in, uh, especially from a Libran perspective, because, you know, Libra is an air sign. You've got Venus in an air sign. Uh, it, it very much focuses on uh, your creativity, uh, on you as a creative player who can make things happen. And... Venus square Uranus allows you to cause a fair amount of disruption. Now, I do understand that Libra is often not associated with being disruptive until you actually start to deconstruct what it means to be um, Libra. Libra is about balance. Uh, Libra generally wants to balance. Uh, Libra does the balancing um so outside pressures have to be responded to so libra tries to keep everyone happy but it can work both ways uh, because libra understands the balance so if you understand the balance then you know how to upset the balance and uh with venus uh square uranus the balance could be upset um you may actually do this quite unconsciously you may want to keep uh, everyone happy. You may want to compromise. But uh, at an unconscious level, that's not what you want at all. At an unconscious level, you are looking for change. You're looking for disruption. And so you might just cause disruption just out of nowhere. It just happens. Um, and you may be rather confused. How did he manage to do that? Uh, I think then it's important for you to be honest with yourself. Um, honest with yourself about how you re relate to other people, where you are in society. Uh, honest about your needs as an individual. And honest about uh, your own fundamental selfishness. Uh, because if you try to pretend you're not selfish, that you're always focused on making the world a better place, you will probably be in denial. And then your unconscious will start to really work, uh, work overtime and um, cause um, unexpected events. And, you know, those unexpected events may, may relate to also what you say. Uh, do you really know what you do? Do you really have control out of, of the words coming out of your mouth? Uh, you may not have control. Um, uh, you know, the moon is in Sagittarius. Uh, the moon is going into Sagittarius this weekend. It's uh, depends on your time zone, but certainly uh, by Sunday, everyone is going to have the moon. The moon is going to be in Sagittarius for everyone. Uh, so the moon in Sagittarius. Uh, can be uh, a bit uh, tactless, uh, can say things without really knowing why the words, why they're saying what they're saying. 
and uh, you may say something because you are feeling a bit trapped and at an unconscious level you may just have to say it you're just going to say things to move things along and uh, your unconscious mind will be able to create some wonderfully um, disturbing sentences just a few words that just could cause a lot of upset uh, so I think you want to be as conscious as possible this weekend um, accept your need to be uh, to be yourself to have control uh, don't be guilty about don't feel guilty about being selfish um, do what you feel is right um, don't compromise uh, don't balance to fit in with other people's plans then you're going to be less disruptive and it's going to be a much smoother weekend um, if you try to do everything everyone else's way uh, if you completely compromise at every turn then you're going to cause without meaning to a huge amount of disruption so in that sense Libra um, I think this weekend you have quite a lot of choice Scorpio the moon is moving out of your star sign uh, it's possibly no bad thing that the moon is moving out of your star sign uh, you know you might have been taking things a little too seriously uh, with the moon moving through uh, with the moon, moon moving through Scorpio and with the moon moving through Sagittarius uh, some of the intensity starts to break up and you may be able to you know focus on other things it's not just about yourself um, it's about uh, you know, the things around you the things uh, you can touch uh, you'll be very aware of that the things you can touch uh, the, the things you know things t uh, can be um, perhaps organized uh, you'll be thinking in some cases about money uh, you know whether whenever the moon goes into Sagittarius from a Scorpio perspective um, there can be uh, a financial issue uh, I don't mean that in a in a bad sense I mean money is important um, and, and as the weekend gets underway uh, as the moon moves to a to a square of Saturn you know that may emphasize what you have and what you don't have and it may may emphasize the limits uh, of what you have you may start to be aware that there are some things that you can't afford or some things uh, you should not be spending money on uh, that might link to to pleasure and leisure there may be there may be something you're spending money on or you know that is totally unimportant uh, I don't know it could be a subscription to a, a ch I don't know a television channel I don't I don't know about those things but some uh, I don't know some entertainment subscription you have or something to do with entertainment where there's regular payment it's, it's which and you really you've just got used to paying the money and it's just not necessary uh, but you know when you look at what you spend on pleasure and leisure and indeed what other people are spending on leisure and pleasure and leisure um, you you might take the view that uh, it's completely unnecessary and so if you want to reduce your expenditure uh, then now might actually be um, a good time to do it and it might be a good time to tell people about your concerns about money uh, just be on, be honest about it moon is in sagittarius uh moon is sagittarius likes being honest moon is sagittarius uh from a scorpio perspective likes being honest about money so do it uh don't worry too much about offending um, other people they won't be offended if they're rational players will they uh, they should have the same priorities as you while all this is going on 
uh, Mars, which is your ruler, is uh, making a, sorry, not Mars, Venus. Uh, while all this is going on, Venus, which rules um, Taurus, which is your opposite sign, Venus is square, uh, making a square aspect to Uranus. Uh, Venus is about other people. Uh, it is about the people you have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And so when it is square Uranus, uh, you can perhaps expect some some behavior which, well, you weren't expecting. Expect the unexpected. Uh, so don't be surprised if someone does something that you just hadn't planned for with Venus square Uranus. Um, someone maybe wants to express their independence and you may not appreciate them expressing their independence. Uh, but I wouldn't make a big issue of it. You know, everyone is independent. Uh, you, have to, you, have to, you have to appreciate that. And so if someone close to you wants to, wants to do something that you hadn't planned for, I'm not saying don't let them do it. I mean, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm not saying just let them get on with it because it may be that they're planning on doing something that is self-destructive. Uh, but uh, give them a fair, give them a fair hearing, and uh, in in your plans for the weekend, uh, make allowance for other people having alternative plans. Um, so that means that any plans for the weekend involving another person have to be talked about. They have to be negotiated, and and you shouldn't make assumptions. Um, about how another person is going to behave because your assumptions may prove prove themselves to be wrong. Yet, uh, your ability to deal with uh, the world at large, all the different people around you, um, is actually quite good. You'll be quite good at managing your contacts, um, at... Um, making sure that everyone is in touch with each other and that you're in touch with them and perhaps making new contacts. Yeah, you can do it. You'll be very good at that. And you'll, you'll be able to um, you know, establish your, your, ind your individuality and people will, in most cases, I think, um, respect, respect what you're trying to do and... Um, you know, respect the, the fact that you're trying to bring people together. So, you know, that might relate to, I don't know, Facebook, social media. So that kind of stuff, I think you'll be you'll be pretty good at and um, maybe helped by the fact that the moon is in Sagittarius. Moon in Sagittarius is all about making networks and all that kind of thing. So you'll be good at that. So I think you can make new contacts. You don't have to see them face to face. It may be, uh, may be something completely on the internet. Uh, but it may be even if you're going to going to parties, meeting people, that you have an opportunity to um, develop uh, your your network of, of contacts. So, uh, yeah, that that's uh, something you can something you can do. But uh, you know, I think the overall message this weekend is uh, focus on money. That's things that can, there are things that can be done. Uh, I think you can force other people to focus on money, but at the same time, don't try to uh make people do things your way because a lot of the people you're dealing with are very independent minded and i do think that you need to um respect that now yesterday sagittarius so sagittarius sagittarius um so sagittarius yesterday i was or on when i was doing my forecast for friday um, I was um, perhaps a little bit downbeat, uh, maybe, but I did say that things are going to get better because uh, the moon is going to move into your sign, and that is indeed true. Uh, moon is moving into Sagittarius, and I think overall uh, that is good news. Um, reason it's good news is well it's in your sign <laughs> you suddenly feel more comfortable uh you feel more at 
ease with yourself. Um, you you kind of understand what's going on and you you can sort of express yourself more you don't have to keep things to yourself i mean in the recent past you may have been worried about whether you can say things you might be have been concerned that if you said the wrong thing you, you might get yourself into trouble uh now you're not so worried about that because the moon is in Sagittarius. Uh, so when a, so when the moon is in Sagittarius, you know Sagittarians, you know, find it uh, do find it easier to express themselves. Um, and we've got some fire in the sky. You know, there hasn't there haven't been any planets in, in far signs unless you count Charon and the North Node in Aries, which I don't count Charon and the North Node in Aries as being in far signs. So with the moon in Sagittarius, uh, in a far sign, planet in a far sign, uh, there's more energy, there's more, there's more acceptance um, of who you are and, and what you're trying to achieve. Um, now, there are going to be times over the weekend still where someone might try to hold you back. Uh, I think you have to be bit careful when dealing with uh, your family. Uh, there may be certain members of your family that try to restrict your freedom of action. They might, they might ask you questions about why you want to do what you're doing. Uh, yeah, this is particularly if you're dealing with older members of your family, maybe members of your family who are sort of more traditional than you, maybe you are wiser than you. I mean, I'm not saying you should ignore what your family is saying. If someone suggests that what you're planning on doing is wrong, well, I suppose you'd hear them out. Uh, but that, you know, that uh, that doesn't mean you should do what they say. Uh, but certainly listen to them. Um, and I think, Sagittarius, you do have to consider your grounding. So whatever you're planning on doing, Sagittarius, you, you don't want to do anything which... Uh, destabilizes you I mean that is that's obviously going to be very important that you do give yourself um, some stability uh, you know particularly now you know there is a lot of activity in Pisces um, Pisces from a Sagittarian perspective represents um, roots and the home um, so that does have to be considered but this weekend uh even though you've got this this emphasis this emphasis on Pisces, you know, with the Moon in Sagittarius, it is a time for uh, forging your own path and for getting the balance right, being free, but also uh, respecting uh, your need for security. And I do think that that is um, something you can do, and uh, I think you can perhaps benefit from. Um, uh, a bit of uh, short distance to and fro, toing and toing and froing, uh, just meeting lots of different people, uh, having very sh perhaps short meetings, sort of micro meetings with with different people, uh, getting a feel for what they are, what they're saying, and I think that is something that you can um, something you can um, really benefit from. Uh, because you need variety now, I think. I think variety for Sagittarians um, is is going to be important, and uh, I, I'm, uh, I think uh, that's going to become even more important, you know, as you sort of move into Monday. Uh, but uh, you know, you can't just be focused on one thing. Uh, I know there are some people that want you to be focused on one thing, that one thing perhaps being them. Uh, but that's that's not good. That's not a good idea for, for Sagittarius. So, uh, yeah, uh, I think that's that's the picture uh, for the weekend. Um, I th I think you're going to um, just enjoy uh, enjoy your you enjoy your sort of new sense of freedom, uh, but just be a little bit respectful. But you don't have to be uh, too respectful. Capricorn. Capricorn, you may feel that uh, 
you need to be in control. You know, whatever the situation, uh, you sort of, I don't know, terrible way, terrible thing to say, but uh, you want to change, but keep, you want to be contr- in control of the narrative. That's a, that's a terrible cliche for the times in which we live. Uh, but it's always about narrative, isn't it? And I think that you're going to really want to be in control of the narrative. Uh, whatever's, whatever's happening, uh, you want to make sure that, uh, th- that you understand where people are moving. Uh, it's not what they're doing right now that's perhaps concerning you. It's perhaps what they're going to be doing next week or next month. And there is a process by which people make plans. They say they're going to do something or they say they may like to, like to do something. And then a bit later, uh, they they repeat themselves and then they're, they start to use greater detail. They say, they say they explain how they're going to do something. Uh, and then the detail starts to start to get stronger and more vivid. And then in the end, they go and do it. Uh, the best time to stop someone doing something is when they just bring up the idea. Stop it at the level of the idea, and it probably won't progress. Uh, the longer you leave it, uh, the more the idea progresses and the more more people are going to just do what they want to do. Uh, so that Capricorn might be something you need to monitor um, or you might want to monitor. Uh, so listen, listen to what people are saying. Um, and when someone make when someone says something that is like uh, a stupid idea. Um, Don't just laugh at it. Consider the possibility that in the end, someone might act on a stupid idea. And so that means that stupid ideas have to be uh, confronted um, uh, as as soon as possible. And... uh, you know that 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 I suppose puts you in a bit of responsibility, but maybe maybe it's okay. Maybe you're in a situation where people aren't being stupid. Uh, you still monitor what monitor the conversation, monitor whatever people are saying around you. I think I think that is um, that is very important. Um, and and perhaps to begin with, uh, you don't have to say much. Uh, you know, this weekend it might be best to just. Uh, take a step back, listen to what people are saying, uh, work it out. Uh, not just what people are saying, just look at, look, listen to what's going on in the world. Uh, uh, perhaps do some research, make up your mind about how things need to, how things need to, do, how things need to develop, and then perhaps at a later stage, you know, after the weekend, uh, you'll be in a. Uh, in a better position uh, to take to take action. Um, there might also be uh, a material side to to the weekend because um, Venus is making a square aspect to Uranus. Uh, so Venus is in Aquarius. Uh, you know, from a Capricorn perspective. Um, Aquarius is a sign that is sometimes connected with money. Uh, so you could say, well, Venus is square Uranus, so there may be uh, a financial matter that just crops up out of nowhere on Sunday uh, that you find a bit disturbing and you feel you have to uh, do something about it. Uh you might also be thinking about your own uh, financial worth and your own earning power, and you may be thinking uh, you may be thinking that something's not quite right, and that might give you the stimulus to um, you know, make uh, make constru- make constructive changes or to change your attitude. But again, we're talking about action probably for next week. So 
So perhaps this weekend for Capricorns uh, is a time for for listening and um, sort of thinking things through. Uh, finishing up with relationships uh, on Sunday, uh, the Moon is making a square to Saturn. Uh, so the, you know the Moon, you know, rules Cancer, your opposite sign. So Moon square Saturn. Uh, it's possible that you and someone else uh, are not entirely on the right wavelength. Uh, now, the moon is in Sagittarius, so possibly someone will say something uh, which you don't like to hear, you don't want to hear. Uh, you know, someone, you know someone, someone perhaps close to you. And you have to work out how to respond. Uh, to the situation and it may be that what you're hearing is not as major as it sounds it might sound a big deal uh, you might want to immediately respond to the situation but you know the moon is in Sagittarius people are saying all sorts of stuff over the weekend especially on Sunday and a lot of it is just it's just hot air so um, perhaps um, that should be your approach uh, so don't um, don't overreact to anything anyone says um, this weekend, um, especially if they're close to you, if it's a, someone who you have an important relationship with. Aquarius. Many Aquarians are going to be feeling quite, uh, quite sociable. Um, you're going to um, want to sort of, you know, Mix with new people, uh, mix with you know people you already know. I think that's, uh, but you know, new people would be good. Um, I think you're going to have um, quite an adventurous attitude um, in terms of um, your, your social life. I think, if possible, you're going to want you know want to, yeah want to meet new people. I mean, I know it's Sunday. Sunday is you know that's especially on Sunday you feel this, but. Uh, uh, depends on your time zone, uh, but uh, you know you, you know you do need some variety. I, th I think I think that is important. Uh, Aquarius is a sign, yeah, where where variety does matter, and um, I think uh, that is certainly something you can, something you can find, um, and your your approach to the world. Uh, is going to be, you know, be you're going to be pretty open-minded, and um, that's certainly going to help uh, in terms of uh, what you're doing, um, in terms of uh, in terms of what you're doing, and how you are managing your uh, social life. But don't expect everything to go to plan. Um, you know, Venus is moving through your sign, moving through Aquarius. And it is making a square aspect to Uranus. So uh, when you're out there interacting with other people, uh, okay, you may not be face to face, maybe over the phone, maybe over the internet. With Venus square Uranus, uh, there could be a surprise. Uh, something someone does doesn't match your expectations. Now, Aquarius has a reputation for being an open-minded sign. But we shouldn't forget that Aquarius is actually a fixed sign. At some level, Sagittarians are not too comfortable um, with sudden change. And you can get, get yourself into a situation where you have a fairly fixed view of how people are supposed to behave. Um, and that's what might happen. That fixed view might be challenged uh, someone might behave in a way that you really weren't expecting or you have to deal with a situation uh, you weren't expecting uh, which in some way seems to disrupt the harmony uh, you had a way you you know you were comfortable and then you're not comfortable and it's because it's because of the way uh, of the way someone has behaved um, and uh, the question then is how do you respond? Uh, I think there is a temptation, uh, uh, Aquarius, to 
take action to try to close someone down you can close someone down in many different ways uh, you don't have to be directly rude to them you don't have to be directly offensive you can just through your actions through your words your body language you can just close someone down or try, attempt to close someone down uh, but i don't think that's the right approach uh, you you perhaps need to be you know more sensitive to other people's needs and to other people's needs for variety and if someone is not doing what you expect uh then you should regard that not as a challenge uh but maybe as an opportunity to learn something uh you don't have all the answers and you may be provided with answers that if you listen to people look at what they're doing that you you weren't expecting and that uh, could in some way uh improve your improve you uh, could make you more open minded give you a give you a clearer vision about the world and and how it is working pisces pisces uh you possibly are thinking ahead uh over the weekend you're not really thinking about where you are right now you're perhaps thinking about what you're going to be doing next week uh or you know monday tuesday uh whatever you're not really in the present uh is that a good thing uh well they do say you're supposed to live in the present don't they i mean they say that that is a recipe for happiness is living in the present uh you know don't is not what the buddhists say you know every, you know treat every breath as being your last breath uh, uh but uh you know there there is a certain value in forward planning and i i think you should spend some time this weekend doing some forward planning now when i say forward planning i am not talking about anything particularly boring you know sitting down with pen and paper or whatever working out what you're going to do uh next week planning starts with a with a vision uh with a broad concept of what you want to be doing uh next week next month next year that broad plan and i think you're going to have that broad plan and uh that broad plan could be could be quite exciting uh but it will be formless and chaotic and uh so perhaps what you need to do uh is uh bring that plan down to earth sorry start again let me bringing that vision down to earth and turning it into a plan so you what starts as a vision needs to end as a plan and uh that is something you can achieve and i think uh particularly on sunday uh is is that's an area where i think you should be you should be trying to concentrate uh and uh your you'll be you'll be helped by you know you'll be helped by the fact that saturn is moving through your star sign yes it's been moving through your star sign for a year and uh while saturn has been moving through your star sign i think in many cases you have become um you know a lot more organized a lot more a lot clearer about what is and what is not possible um and i think you have become sort of more of a you know more of an of, of an authority figure uh perhaps that's not something one always associates with pisces but that is something you can do and i think that you can uh you can really start to you know bring uh bring things bring things together but it, that's not the only thing that the weekend um is about um you know the moon has uh, is changing sign uh the moon from scorpio to sagittarius uh depending on your time zone uh saturday morning uh if you're in the americas you got moon moving into sagittarius 
moon is more moon in Sagittarius is more of a Sunday thing if you're in uh, East Asia, Australia, New Zealand. But you know, with the moon in Sagittarius, um, you can uh, present yourself uh, in an exciting way. Uh, you know, you will you will come over as being someone interesting, um, who's who's got good ideas, and I I think people will will gravitate towards you. Uh, you know, they they will like having you around, and uh, it is okay to discuss uh, and tell them how you feel about the world. Um, I think actually you've got very strong views about the world, uh, about what's right and what's wrong. And um, I think, you, you, yeah, you can uh, express these views um, very powerfully. And in your own way, yeah, you may be able to uh, get, get quite, a, quite a following for yourself. Uh, one other thing, if you are working over the weekend, uh, maybe you're not, uh, probably not, but just if you happen to be working over the weekend, um, I, I think you're going to be very effective. I think it's going to be a very useful weekend. I mean, whether you're working, you know, whether you're going out there, you're going to a place of work, or you work at home, um, I think you're going to you're going to be um, you're going to be someone that people are really going to take notice of, and you'll be very good at um, organising people. Um, so that's the overall picture, Pisces. I, I think uh, whatever you're doing this weekend, I think it's going to be useful. Uh, and um, I think it's OK to think ahead. Um, I th- as I said, it's a weekend where you can turn visions into plans. The I Ching gives a different view. Um, and so I have looked at the looked at the I Ching for the weekend. So the question I, um, I asked is, uh, what is the weekend going to be like for those watching the I Ching segment of this video? And uh, the first hexagram I got was hexagram number two, the receptive and so this may say something more about more about saturday and uh, what we should be uh how we should be dealing with uh, with saturday now you will notice that this hexagram the receptive every single line is broken um so what what that means is it's not really a time for to be taking action it's not a time for pushing things out. It's a time for um, just seeing what the world has got to offer. Uh, um, see, you know, see what other people are suggesting. See what the world is suggesting. Take it all in. Um, because we're not really ready to make up our minds. Uh, we're not ready to be super creative. Um, because we we really we don't really understand what's going on uh we need to just just pause uh reflect uh and we mustn't be pushed into taking premature action taking action uh especially on saturday i think would be a bad idea because we just don't have all the details and we don't we haven't in terms of our feelings we need to feel what's going on around us um and um really uh, pick this up and get ready get ready for the next challenge so this hexagram the receptive has three moving lines and uh, uh, so as these as these lines move you know to begin with uh, we can see things are changing uh our sensitivity is telling us the way things is telling us about the way things are moving um and we may actually be aware that there's there we see the first signs of decay the first signs of winter are here which is a very good thing good reason why um it's not a good idea to take action because we can see that as things are changing, if we were to take action now, we would be taking action in a changing situation, in a, in a situation that would actually be in in a state of decay. 
Uh, but I don't want to really em to emphasize too much with State of Decay because uh, in the end, with these moving lines, the, you know, m most importantly, the, the, the fifth line moves. And the fifth line uh, is about putting ourselves in a position where we may be ready to follow someone else's leadership or advice. It's not about us being in control. It's about us um, perhaps accepting that someone else knows more than we do uh, or accepting that we haven't got all the answers, accepting that uh, maybe some authority figure is, is, should be followed and, and that um, that's, that's the way it is. It's just that, so there is that acceptance. And this hexagram, hexagram number two, uh, it does move. Uh, it moves to hexagram number 60, which is uh, limitation. So limitation, it's kind of more of the same thing, really, as uh, this might say something about Sunday, is we just have to accept that we, there's a limit to what we can do. We can't achieve very much this weekend um, in terms of the big things. Um, but we don't want to punish ourselves. You know, limitation is about limitation up to a point. Uh, the I Ching warns us about uh, going over the top with our limitation. Uh, not, we can't be too puritanical. If, if, if a limitation hurts, um, like, I don't know, fasting, that's an example of a limitation that hurts. Okay, some limitations hurt but are necessary, like, I don't know, giving up smoking or giving up drugs or something. But uh, uh, in general, limitation should not be totally, uh, totally painful. If it's painful, then there's something wrong. And so overall, looking at, looking at the I Ching, uh, it's, it's indicating a time where we shouldn't be trying to accomplish much on our own. Um, we should be accepting the limitations of the time, of the times we're in. Um, and uh, perhaps it's just really about preparing for the week ahead. But uh, it's, not, it's certainly not an exciting weekend um, from the perspective of the I Ching. Um, let other people take the initiative um, uh, because it's not for us. And that's, that's simply, um, simply um, the way it is. I now want to look at uh, Gaza, um, and I'm, I'm wary of looking at Gaza um, because um, I don't want to upset anyone. Uh, so I just want to look at, uh, uh, if you like, the the charts of the matter. Just just stick to the charts. Um, so there was this this attack. Uh, was it an attack? I mean, if you remember the BBC article saying what happened with this food, with this with, with this food convoy, people were trying to get food and a lot of them were killed. The Israelis claim it had nothing to do with them, uh, that it was just too many people and people were just killed in a panic. Hamas and uh, supporters of Palestine are saying that, uh, are suggesting that you know, the Israelis actually fired on them. So we don't really know what happened. Um, uh, at least I'm just going by the BBC article. Uh, maybe maybe information has 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 come which where we do now where we do know what happens. But uh, I just wanted to look at the look at the chart of this what happened in Gaza. So this is a chart uh, of the time mentioned by BBC, uh, February the 29th, 2024, at 4:45 a.m. Um, local time. Uh, so last week there was a square between Mars and Jupiter, which I talked about. Um, you know, I did indicate that the Mars square Jupiter uh, could be unfortunate because it represents excessive energy, putting too much energy into something. Um, it could be about... Uh, the Israeli Defence Force using too much energy, using being too trigger happy. 
It could be about you know people rushing for food with Mars square Jupiter. It's it's intensified. Uh, so Mars square Jupiter is always going to be more powerful when it's on an angle. And we see at the time of this incident, 4.45, Mars was right on the ascendant, two degrees from the ascendant. So it linked with the place. You see, Mars square Jupiter affects everyone all around the world. Uh, but there is... So if you, if you want to link that Mars square Jupiter with a place, you have, to look, you have to look at something like the ascendant. And so there you have Mars hitting the ascendant. And you had Jupiter uh, square the ascendant. Uh, so that that fits the Mars square Jupiter kind of links with um, with the place, uh, and uh, Mars square Jupiter is represents something uh, 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 something where too much energy has caused, in this case, has caused a lot of death. Um, other things going on in that chart: uh, the Moon was was just about to change sign and the, the moon was square pluto so there is a sort of an intensity and a drama about it suggested by that moon square pluto and then there is uranus uh uranus is aspecting the uh the sun moon midpoint so the sun moon midpoint uh you see there's this uh, there's the the moon is approximately the sun moon midpoint is at around four or five capricorn so the uranus is exactly semi square uh the sun Uran the sun uh uh the sun uranus uh midpoint uh, so that's uh so when you've got uranus on the sun moon midpoint that says that there's a sudden event uranus is uh something unexpected but some something some someone wasn't planning for uh perhaps the people rushing towards the food weren't planning on the Israelis firing on them if you take the the Hamas view uh or everyone was excitable sun moon, uranus on the sun moon midpoint moving towards this food the food and that's that's what caused so many people to be killed um we should also notice the midheaven i think the midheaven is actually perhaps the most important thing, that uh, the Midheaven and the IC, the IC is at 26 degrees, 27 Taurus. So the IC is on Algol. Uh, Algol is the head of the demon. Uh, so that is perhaps um, a bad sign. Also with the IC, uh, the, the IC... Uh, is see the IC is um, square the Mars Saturn midpoint so so the whole MC IC axis this uh, line here is square the Mars Saturn midpoint so the Mars Saturn midpoint it, it, Mars and Saturn as a pair is connected with death can be connected with death and destruction um, and decay and so that links with the moment uh, Mars is on the ascendant and the MC is on the MC and the IC are on the Mars Saturn midpoint, uh, uh, and you've got the IC on Algol, and so uh, I, I think, in terms of looking at this chart and why something terrible happened uh, with this incident with this food convoy, uh, I think you can certainly see that from the chart, and I, I'm not going to speculate on who I think was responsible for it uh, because as I said I, I, I don't really um, want to uh, I don't want to upset anyone <laughs> um, I don't really I don't actually have any views myself to be honest I have no idea what happened I don't know I don't know who is the fault whose fault it was um, just by going from a BB on that BBC article but the chart does indicate um, that something difficult um, something really bad happened um, I now want to just very quickly look at uh, the ch before looking because I do want to look at George Galloway's chart. Um, I wanted to look at just a reminder about what is happening, uh, what's happening with Israel and there's Israel's chart. Uh, 
So Israel is uh, Israel has got its sign. That, that's for May the fourteenth, nineteen forty-eight. You know, where is this thing going on with what's happening with Gaza? Um, you know, we are heading towards something here, aren't we? Um, Uranus is Uranus is now at about twenty twenty Taurus, and uh, 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 Israel has its sun at uh, twenty forty Taurus. So what's happening is that Uranus is moving towards a conjunction um, with um, Israel's sun. And that's uh, that conjunction is going to be exact at uh, sort of end of end of May. In fact, pretty close to Israel's um, Israel's solar return when it when it when it reaches its birthday, May the fourteenth. I mean, May the fourteenth. The sun is going to be at Uranus is going to be at uh, where is it? Where is it going to be? Twenty three ten. So. Things are happening. Things are things are brewing there, and I, I always felt with this year that you know maybe this year is not going to start off in such a dramatic way. But as a, it's going to be a long, hot summer, uh, I think, in terms of the Middle East, and then you look at look at Palestine. Uh, this is Palestine's chart for the time that Palestine's independence was declared on November the fifteenth, nineteen eighty eight, in Algiers. Uh, uh, Palestine has its sun at twenty two fifty. There, there is Palestine's IC. It's assuming that this time of twelve forty is correct. Uh, Palestine has its sun at twenty two fifty Scorpio. Uh, so uh, Uranus is starting to make this opposition between uh, opposition to Palestine's sun. Uh, so it's all it's a kind of all happening, isn't it? Um, and it's going to happen, you know, over the next uh, over the next couple of months. I think the thing is really starting to move move to a move to a head. And but uh, uh, it is a long hot summer. We shouldn't forget that the United States um, has um, has has Gemini on its descendant, and of course Jupiter is going to move into Gemini. Um, in a few months' time, one other chart is the chart of Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, we're not absolutely sure what time he's born. I think the general consensus seems to be he was born in the late morning. Um, and one thing about a Benjamin Netanyahu is that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu has his Mars at twenty six forty five Leo. Uh, so Uranus is slowly moving towards a square with his Mars. Now, I think the general view is that Netanyahu, in the long term, politically, he's he's finished. But as soon as there's an election, uh, he may be he may get a considerable amount of blame for what's happened. What happened on October the seventh, perhaps for not being sufficiently prepared. Um, but his Mars at 2645 in July. Mid July, there is a conjunction uh, between um, Mars and uh, let's get this right between Mars and Uranus at around twenty six Taurus. So that Mars Uranus conjunction, which in Taurus, which I think is a pretty big conjunction for the world in general, not least because it's on Algol, the head of the demon. That conjunction is square uh, Netanyahu's Mars, and I, I think uh, I think July, if he's still around, could be quite a big month for him. Finally, uh, I'd want to quickly look at the chart of George Galloway. Uh, so George Galloway uh, had this really quite sensational um, by-election uh, victory uh, on, uh, as a result of the Thursday, the Thursday by-election, which was on February the 29th, and the results came in on the early morning of March the 4th. Uh, so here is... Uh, here is Here's George Galloway's horoscope. So he was born on August the 16th, 1954, um, at, uh, I think it's at 6 a.m. Uh, and he is a real Leo. I mean, clearly, George Galloway um, knows how to present himself. Um, uh, he does very much focus on, on his appearance. Um, 
and on on how he comes over to a sort of a wider audience and he gets yeah he certainly gets attention and he is he yeah he is a super leer really i mean he has got mercury at uh 16 leo he's got the sun at 22 leo he's got pluto at 24 leo and that sun pluto conjunction is on the ascendant so here's someone with born at sunrise uh sun in leo ascendant in leo um and uh he he he, he is uh a very powerful figure and he knows how to communicate um very powerfully and uh, look at his mars his mars is at 27 sagittarius so his mars is trying the ascendant it's sort of trying the sun trying pluto so yes i think that he's he is someone who has uh, who has a lot of um a, a lot of a lot of power and he's uh, able to communicate um in a way that okay it may be powerful he, i mean i suppose he, the accusation by his by his critics would be that he's too into himself, that he has um, a certain amount of sort of arrogance and self-importance, um, that he believes he's got all the answers, that he is absolutely right. Um, you know, I, I don't think he has any doubt about the rights and wrongs, for example, in Gaza. Um, he gave his, he dedicated his his really his his by election victory victory to Gaza. Um, and like uh, like Meghan Merkel, he has a Mercury con Sun con Sun Mercury conjunction in Leo. So that Mercury is okay. It's it's not exactly conjunct the Sun, but it's six degrees off. Uh, so if you've got Sun conjunct Mercury in Leo, he is right. He believes he is completely right, and there's not really much in the way of argument about it. Um, so that is certainly um, a criticism. Um, this moon in Pisces is interesting. Uh, it, it provides um, a sort of a different view. I mean, the moon in Pisces in the eighth house, uh, it's trying Jupiter in Cancer. Um, you know, I think there's genuine compassion there. Uh, I do. I, th I think he really does, you know... He, he really does feel for the Palestinian cause um, uh, and the, the, the suffering in Gaza. I, I don't think it's fake at all. Um, and that, but that moon in Cancer, uh, that moon trying Jupiter in Cancer is also very good at picking up the popular mood, um, picking up picking up the mood almost before it happens. And I think it's helped by the fact that he's got, he, but he's such a fire, you know, kind of a fire water person. You know, fire can be intuitive, can know exactly how to, to can have one's finger on the pulse because one just knows. But then moon trying Jupiter, particularly without Jupiter in cancer, you know, exalted in cancer, um, has just has a real... Uh, sense of the way people feel uh, and so as a politician that does put him in a strong position um, of course you could say that in some respects he's a failed politician because at least you know he, he started off as being a Labour Party you know Labour Party MP he didn't get into you know he I don't think he ever became a government minister because he was a maverick but that was his path um, but um, as a maverick, as a maverick politician, he is certainly very successful. And his by-election victory uh, certainly underlines that success. Now I want to look at the by-election uh, by victory. Oh, before I do that, a uh, couple of things about uh, George Galloway's um, midpoints. Um, he has a sun, uh, a sun Venus uh, semi-square. Uh, there you can see Sun and Venus are semi-square. And that Sun-Venus semi-square is on the Mars-Jupiter midpoint. So uh, there is, um, there's Mars, there's Jupiter. Uh, so, I, so he's got, uh, I think that is, uh, so he's got, yeah, he's got Venus conjunct the Mars-Jupiter midpoint. Uh, 
And so the sun, because it's semi-square Venus, he's got... Uh, so if you've got sun and Venus on the Mars-Jupiter midpoint, that allows you to be really quite sort of over the top, larger than life, really being able to project one's message. Also, uh, he has Jupiter. There's Jupiter, strong Jupiter in Cancer. Um, but that Jupiter is uh, aspecting I th by by semi-square, I think. Jupiter, he, so if you look at his Jupiter, yeah, he's got Jupiter... Uh, he's got Jupiter semi-square, his sun-moon midpoint. So that means Jupiter very much defines who he is. So remember, you know, uh, Charles Harvey and Michael Harding in their book, Working with Astrology, really emphasized points aspecting the sun-Jupiter midpoint, like Janis Joplin had Jupiter aspecting the, Mar the moon-Mars midpoint, which allowed her, even though she was a Capricorn, to be an over-the-top person. So George Galloway has Jupiter aspecting his Mars, his sun moon midpoint. So that allows him to be over the top, larger than life. And I think really that is what he is. And I think that that's what people go for. Plus, Jupiter, his Jupiter in Cancer is very moral. I mean, you might disagree with his morals, but he speaks with with great morality. It's all about what is right and wrong. And as far as he's concerned, what is going on in Gaza is wrong. And he's very clear about that, not just in Gaza. In a, you know, before when he was talking about uh, America's inter and Britain's intervention in Iraq in 2003, he was absolutely uh, wild about that, really regarding this as a massive injustice. And it's true. I mean, hundreds of thousands of people died because of what, what because of the the America's. Uh, search for non-existent, uh, you know, obsession of non-existent weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. It was a disaster. Um, so, yeah, very moral, very a, a belief that he certainly is right. Finally, just wanted to look at what was going on at the time of the by-election result. Um, so the by-election result, that's the by-election result. Uh, that was when it was announced that he had won. Uh, I think it was clear he was going to win uh, beforehand. Uh, it was a dramatic event. Perhaps at the time of the, at the time of a by election result, we had a moon, we had moon, we had moon Jupiter opposition, exact moon Jupiter opposition. The release of something, the news has happened. Okay, moon might be in Scorpio, but it's still moon opposition Jupiter. It's happened, and. Uh, it was sort of linked with the sun. So the sun was trying the moon and trying Jupiter. And that was when it, that was when it happened. But what about, how does it, what about George Galloway's chart? How does it link up with him? So if, assuming his six o'clock time, his, his, his time of birth at 6am is correct. Uh, he has, he had Jupiter pretty close to his midheaven. He had Jupiter on his midheaven. You know, he probably wasn't born exactly at 6am. So it's possible he had Jupiter exactly on his midheaven because we don't know precisely where it is and he had moon on his ic so that moon jupiter opposition was right on his on his mc ic and so that is a classic thing jupiter on the midheaven career success now in my experience jupiter on the midheaven can all can be about getting jobs and it can be about losing jobs but in his case jupiter in the midheaven has really pushed him into the limelight and enabled help you know help, enabled him to um win this by-election so that's it uh those are some views or some rather comments on gaza and um george galloway uh i hope you found that uh interesting i'm i'm really not expressing an opinion on gaza um i must emphasize that uh i'm just trying to you know looking at looking, looking at the horoscope you know of that uh, event on uh, a few days ago and all those people were killed in Gaza I just wanted to just look at the chart and I'm I'm not expressing any view about what exactly happened because I understand that is controversial anyway uh, yeah thank you very much for listening uh, d if you found that useful um, I would be grateful if you were to press the like button if you're not subscribed and you found it useful I would of course be grateful if you were to subscribe and if you want to buy me a coffee, there is a link in the description. Thanks again for listening, and I will talk to you again very soon.